to what will I compare this generation? This is the question Jesus puts before us today. To what will I compare this generation? For us, the listeners, Jesus paints a picture as to what it is that he is experiencing in society and why the question even needs to be asked. Jesus lets us know that there were two movements going on at the time. One of John the Baptist and one of Jesus. Movements happen in society when things get out of balance. When the power within the structures of society becomes so oppressive that the need to, to change can't, just can't be contained just no more. I'm sure every generation is faced with some type of movement which creates the need to respond, the need to make a choice as to what side of the movement you believe in. This past Tuesday, we celebrated a movement. We celebrated the signing of the Declaration of Independence. You, you should read that document. It lists what their movement was all about. They were tired of oppression, tyranny, and abuse of power. They were tired of not having a voice, and those in that movement on July 4th, 1776, said, enough is enough. So they began the process of becoming a new nation, a nation based on the truths of equality and a set of unalienable rights, which included life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I attended a nice gathering last Tuesday. I would not say it was a party, but in looking at my social media, there were lots of parties that day. At the gathering I attended, there were no words of remembrance, no speeches as to why we gathered in the first place. The 4th of July is not a party, or merely a day off. It is a reminder of a movement, a work in progress that continues today. Jesus is reminding his listeners of the movements of his day when he compares that generation to children sitting in the marketplace, calling out to one another. First, you may need the reminder that the children who would have been sitting around in the marketplace would have been children who were the outcasts, the children without a voice. These powerless children were no longer part of a family, either because their family had died or they were disowned because they broke with cultural norms, bringing shame and dishonor upon their family. These children were dehumanized by the powers that be, and seen as being unworthy and disposable. Jesus says these children were calling to one another because they were the only ones listening. They called out, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. It is here that Jesus reveals the movements of the generation John's movement wailed and called people to mourn, and Jesus' movement was about a new covenant, a new relationship with God, the wedding and joining of a new type of family. The flute and the dancing represents the activities at a wedding feast, and the movement of Jesus was a celebration of our new union and oneness with God. The discarded people, the children of God in the streets, are those who joined the movements, movements that call us to see our mistakes, movements of opportunity to admit and confess our mistakes, and movements for us to make change for the good. We might say a movement of the Holy Spirit, opening us up to a new understanding of what it means to live a life of love within the family of God. Those who could not truly hear Jesus 
when he spoke only made excuses as to why they would not risk losing their comfortable places in society. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. Son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Isn't it interesting that they choose to label Jesus by the company he kept? Jesus was teaching of a relationship with God where everyone is invited to the wedding banquet, but the powerful didn't want to join the celebration if the outcasts would be there too. These wise and intelligent would interpret their laws to keep the outcasts in their place. These days, we just make new laws. We the people have had many movements over the generations. It is important for us to know that once a movement begins, it never ends. Once our eyes are open to the truth, we can no longer ignore it. The movements become a part of us. The movement that we should remember on July 4th did not end in 1776. That's when it began. The movement to end slavery and racism did not end with the Emancipation Proclamation. That was just the beginning. The movement for women's rights is equal to that of men did not end when they earned the right to vote. The movement for the equality of the LGBTQ plus members of humanity, it didn't end when they earned the right to marry who they love. The Jesus movement didn't end when the powers that be hung him on a tree, and it didn't end on the third day when he rose from the dead. The Jesus movement continues. Just like these other movements within our society, we have to choose to participate and keep them alive. We have to choose to listen for God beyond our comfort zones. We have to choose the courage to admit when we are wrong. We have to choose not to merely say we are sorry, but respond in loving action to fix the systems that cause the suffering of others, all while forgoing, finger-pointing, and blame. I don't think Jesus ever gave up on the rich, powerful, and those who wouldn't listen. At least, I hope not. If he didn't give up on them, then it's not too late for us to live into the invitation we accepted at our baptisms. But how do we do this? There's so much noise, it's very overwhelming. I guess a good place to start would, would be to listen to Jesus. He says we are to take upon us his yoke. Jesus' yoke was what he teaches. It is his system of love and care, a guide for how we are to love God and how we are to love and care for other people, all people. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. With gentle and humble hearts, let's do this. Let's live in such a way that we allow God's love to shape our responses and actions to the current movements of the world so that when Jesus asks to what our generation can be compared, the only answer can be that we are a reflection and embodiment of him. Amen.